hook for the aeons. Lamu, demon of jaundice, Venus, Aries, four to three, a reach and pen, literally the long face, ruler over the aeon of seven angels. Let us begin in the aeon from positive 4,000 to positive 6,000 year Pythagoras that is still around 2,000 years in our future. Ancient astronomers also observed the celestial events we are observing now, and those who remained recorded what happened. All the ancient myths of the world describe a galactic crossing era, followed by a flood at the beginning of the age of modern civilization. Now we are seeing the galactic crossing era and so from these ancient records we can study what to expect will follow. The oldest records of these times describe a great war in the heavens between the north and south as both realized the other would attempt to claim its indigenous resources in the event of a global cataclysm. By positive 4,000 year Pythagoras, we can expect massive amounts of resources to have been depleted and alternative courses of action pursued. Thus, in the most ancient legends known to mankind, the records of the pre-diluvial Sumerians, they describe a panic that the world will end due to the abuse of some unique form of technology. This is then followed by natural disasters and massive population redistributions. The records of our order's history describe events dating back hundreds of thousands of years beyond this as well. However, it is from this era in the past that the records first begin to be codified and kept as a written and oral history. So, we know of this era only that they were great historians but that their kind would, eventually, die out to be replaced by us. This aeon dates backward to, to the beginning of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age, when North America and Europe were glaciated. As these glaciers melted, sea levels rose rapidly worldwide. It was only this recently also that glaciers formed over Antarctica, which had been our home at the time for many hundreds of thousands of years. It also dates forward to a time in our own future, and it is beginning from this point that we start counting backward until we reach the same spot at the beginning. And to Blood Gatherer Uranus Taurus 2 to 5 the tyranny of any pope, ruler of the aeon of twelve Nibiruans. These are the modern times when planets and our galactic hub align, but bear in mind they also align when we were in the position on the opposite side of the circular cycle from where we are now. Instead of a solar eclipse, we will see in positive 2012 year Pythagoras. They simply saw a lunar eclipse, but otherwise the alignment was the same. At that time, it was the peak of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age and the devastation of the climate change at its highest point. Likewise, on the opposite side of the cycle, we find the peak of the South Hemisphere Ice Age's effect on the North being largely countered by an increasing sunspot cycle. Just as, in our opposite position, the lunar tides were drawn by the alignment with the gravity of galactic core, so too now are the sunspots related to our upcoming alignment between the Sun and galactic core. The ancient texts recorded all this as an era of aridness in one hemisphere correspondent to an era of extreme frigidity in the other. Tiamat, Bloody Claws, Gemini, Tiamat, 6 to 1, Lemort, Perfect Pope, 
ruler of the Aeon of seven churches. The era of seven churches marked the period of mourning for the death of the perfect pope, of the order Pythagoras, the order's second founder. During this period, the diaspora of Jesus' immediate family spread out to claim many of the kingdoms of Europe, only to suffer vicious pogroms to exterminate them at the hands of the church invented in Jesus' name. This appearance of an internal schism within the Western establishment of civilization was planned out by Pythagoras many years before the Romans took advantage of the person of Jesus to tell their own Gospels about him. By devoting his life to studying the mathematical patterns of nature, Pythagoras not only gained the respect of his peers and students, he foresaw beyond his own time period and predicted the need to maintain some form of civil order in the event of a global catastrophe. That is why he divided the POD into an exoteric outer shell and an esoteric inner core, and made them appear to compete from the outside while really cooperating in private. Such is the case between the Catholic Church and the descendants of Jesus. King Yu Bloody teeth, moon, cancer, one to six, kings, ruler over the aeon of twelve apostles. Prior to Jesus, there were many failed attempts by ordinary people trying to rise up against the overwhelming social oppression and speak out against the dominant dogmas of the day. These were not false messiahs, any more so than was Jesus himself. All who have tried to change the system from within have been killed for it. Consider that the Buddha in Eastern culture offered a system for transcendence from reincarnation by meditation that was met with high regard, whereas in the Western culture a very similar though greatly oversimplified version salvation through works was preferred by Jesus and he was assassinated for it. The reason for this is timing since the people of that day knew they were counting down to the date of the change of an aeon. The result was a great enthusiasm before the actual significant date and a great disappointment and frustration following it when the world once again failed to end. However, for 2,000 years leading up to this, there was a vastly diverse population of pre-Christian messiahs. Anne, Scab Stripper, Neptune, Leo, 3 to 4, are each end pin, literally the long face, ruler of the Aeon of 12 tribes. Just as later, in the time of Jesus, there was a great social hope for a sun deity, a solar monotheistic savior. At the end of the prior eon, there had been a seasonal shifting from northern hemisphere summer into autumn, and thus a waning in the previous wrathful solar deity cults marked by Petro bloodletting rites and worship of God, the father of time. The last great father figure was the pharaoh Akhenaten, who embraced solar monotheism and dedicated his children to the worship of the solar sphere as a regenerative force. This aeon began with Moses and the Hebrew Exodus and ended with the birth of Buddha, Pythagoras, and Jesus. Lahamu, Demon of Pus, Virgo, Mars, 6 to 1, Le Mort False Pope, ruler over the aeon of 12 generations. At the beginning of this aeon, there was the great flood that destroyed much of Iraq and South America. At the end of this era, the pyramids had been built, the civilizations of Mesopotamia had recovered and become empires, 
and there was sustained transatlantic trade between the Egyptians and the Olmec of South America. This era was marked by a rush for a recovery from the climatological cataclysm of the final floods at the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age. This rush eventually began to exceed the capacity for sustenance provided by the environment. At this point, the empires of the ancient world have all followed the same course, be it the earliest Sumerians, the mighty Egyptians, or the more recent Aztec. When the local resources become scarce, an unwinnable war is begun to conquer the resources of the nation's neighbors. Thus, by the end of this aeon, all the great attempts at recovering the global civilizations of before the floods had already died out to internal schisms and succumbed to the enemy within. Anshar Bone Scepter Jupiter Libra 1-6 to six, False Pope Ruler of the Aeon of Seven Sethites Prior to the final floods at the midpoint of summer in the northern hemisphere, a great global civilization flourished. This was the epoch of Lemuria, and our records relate much of their lifestyle at this time. People primarily lived on the coasts and kept away from the last remaining tribes of Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons who migrated much further inland. This period of time is described diversely as an era of peacefulness and luxury, with the greatest temptation being to risk losing sobriety. It was during this time that much of the originally scientific cosmologies that have become the great myths of the world were first drafted. The meanings of all the aeons were compared to try to find some solution to unlocking them for one's own good. It was for the better portion of this aeon our own human species that was in a minority among the other families of hominids. This was the period when the first European mineheers were raised, as well as the first stone heads of Easter Island. Mamu, Wing, Scorpio, Mercury, 2-5, to five. the tyranny of any pope, ruler of the Aeon of Seven Nephilim. It was in this eon that the Homo sapiens species distinctly diverged from its ancestors, the Australopithecines and the Neanderthals, and began competing for attention against the Cro Magnons and the Clovis, or grooved ware people. During this aeon, the Clovis finally became extinct and the last of the Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons appear to have died out in the massive floods of successive aeons. At this stage, we were learning to use tools that had been developed many aeons previously by other species of hominid. For a variety of physiological reasons, our species finally won out in the end against the other species of hominids. This was the era during which the final populations of species were still recovering from the beginning of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age and resettling into new, often vastly different environments. Migration among the tribes of early people was the primary way of survival, and gone were the days of comfort in Antarctica. Nibiru Seven Death Nibiru Sagittarius. Four to three. Zer and Pin, literally the short face, ruler over the Aeon of Seven Powers. During this era, there was a great amount of conflict between various tribes of Australopithecines and Neanderthals from various different equatorial regions. Apparently, intercontinental travel was common although there was a much greater influx of immigrants from the glaciating Antarctica than there appears to have been diversity of cross-cultural trade. The first great civilizations of the equatorial regions can be dated to as early as this time with the origination of the Vedic caste system 
the civilization of Sumeria and the practice of pyramid building in Egypt and China. By this eon, the great Atlantean civilization that had flourished in Antarctica had completely concluded. It was during this eon that the gods were said to be at war with one another. City-states often fought, but more often trade prevailed. The tension of evacuating Antarctica was fading, but the security in a new home, the Australopithecines of the day did not yet have. Apsu, one death. Sun, Capricorn, three to four. Zer and Pen, literally the short face, ruler of the Aeon of Twelve Archons. It was during this Aeon that the Australopithecines began to interbreed with the North Hemisphere Neanderthals to beget the three chief species that would compete for dominance for the next four Aeons, namely the Cro-Magnon, the Clovis, and Homo sapiens. This period corresponds to the Australopithecine migrations out of Antarctica following the primary aeonic summer seasonal flooding of the southern hemisphere as the northern hemisphere ice caps continued to recess at a rapid rate. This was the eon when the Australopithecines who had begun to migrate out of Antarctica in the previous aeon began to colonize the equatorial regions. Gaga, Packstrap, Aquarius, Pluto, 5 to 2, 3 over 2, ruler over the Aeon of 7 and Lelites. During this Aeon, the rapid thawing out of the icebergs above Europe and North America was threatening the South Hemisphere network of coastal civilizations centered around Antarctica. Prior to this time, the equatorial regions were only beginning to be explored by the northward migrating Australopithecines of Antarctica. It was unknown then if the regions could sustain the massive influx of population predicted as necessary. There was a general panic among the Australopithecine population of Antarctica. They recalled legends of previous wars between the North and South Hemispheres to compete for territory following sudden global climatological shifts. They desired to avoid this, but began reluctantly preparing for war in case one seemed unavoidable. The general stress level became unbearable, and the original Atlantean idealisms of the Antarctic Australopithecines had been lost by this eon. Kishar Skull Scepter, Saturn, Gemini, 5 to 2, 23, ruler of the Aeon of 12 Anunnaki. Following the Great North-South Wars during the prior Aeon, the Australopithecines of Antarctica lived in harmony with their environment and did not suffer any seriously adverse effects in their climate due to the beginning of the end of the last North Hemisphere Ice Age. This was the time of greatest study and advancement in the sciences of the mind, and the Australopithecines of Antarctica from this aeon could achieve telekinesis and levitation of massive stone blocks was common knowledge. This was the aeon of the most high Atlantean idealism among the Australopithecines of Antarctica. It was during this era that all the high sciences and laws of Atlantis as they are now known among the POD were originally codified. Although it was highly idealized, the forms of pure Atlantean democracy as laid out in the constitutions has never yet been put into public practice. In the end, the primary fall of Antarctic Australopithecine Atlantean civilization was that it remained loyal to the royal dynasty of kingship and never achieved the democracy it idealized.